Ah, thank you. Wake up call. Great. Good to see you all this morning. Kind of a dreary day out there. Is everybody awake anyway? Yeah. I mean, not dreary in here, but dreary out there. And when it's dreary out there, sometimes it makes us kind of just, you know. Hey, I hope that you all will stick around and come back Come back into the sanctuary. Uh, the Sue Empyreans Barbershop Chorus is going to show up here at about 10.40. They're supposed to anyway. They're going around singing at uh, about six or seven different places. Sometimes churches two times, like they've already been here once today. But anyway, supposed to be back here about 10, uh, 10.40 to begin that service. So if you want to just come on back in and uh, listen and then leave with them. Uh, when they leave, that's that's fine. I do sing with them, um, but I hope that won't stop you from coming back in to listen to them. We have a good time, and it's it's fun to to sing for uh, lots of people. So that's why I hope you'll you'll stick around. Well, we have been uh, talking over the the summer about uh, David and his life, and today as we as we look at the scripture. Uh, you know, he's, he's the king, he's had several victories with, with his armies, and brought the Ark of the Covenant back, uh, back home, if you will, and uh, David's kind of on this thing where he's just relaxing a little bit, and uh, sometimes when that happens, um, some not so good things can happen in life. And that's what we see today. We're reading from 2 Samuel chapter 11 and the first 17 verses. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all Israel with him. They ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period, and then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. And then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house, and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. When they told David, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, You have just come from a journey. Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah remain in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day. On the next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. And in the evening he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, 
Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him so that he may be struck down and die. As Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew there were valiant warriors. The men of the city came out and fought with Joab. And some of the servants of David among them, uh, among the people fell. Uriah the Hittite was killed as well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, I'll never forget the phone call I had a few years ago. In the course of the conversation, the person told me that his pastor's sermon that morning was about sex. And I asked him, well, what what scripture had he preached from? And after he told me a little bit about it, I knew right away what scripture he was referring to, that he was indeed talking about the very scripture we are using today. And the person I was talking to said he didn't realize that that was in the Bible. (laughs) But you know, the Bible tells it like it is. We read about some wonderful people in the Bible. Some of the wonderful things that they did. But that's not all that we find in the Bible. We also read about their failings their wrongdoings, the evil things that they did. We read about their dark side. So if you think about it, Noah, great man, Noah got drunk, Moses disobeyed God, Jonah was vindictive, Jacob cheated his brother, Peter denied Jesus, Paul persecuted Christians, And Abraham passed off Sarah as his sister. Now that is quite a list of of great men, great leaders. It's just that sometimes (laughs) these guys did some things that were not so wonderful. And of course we can add to that list King David. Because we find in our scripture reading today that he was indeed quite human. Over the past several weeks, we've talked about the great things that David had done, how he'd been chosen by God, how he had defeated the giant Goliath, how he was one of the best and most successful leaders of the army, how he became king, how he continued to lead the armies in victorious battle, how he brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. I mean, what a great man he was. What great things he did. But in our scripture reading for today, we find him not only being tempted to do something that was wrong, but we find that he yields to the temptation. The king has fallen. Now we can all relate to temptation. There is not one of us here this morning. I don't even have to ask. I know. I know that there's not one of us here who has never been tempted in some way to do something that was not right. At some point in our lives, most of us probably are tempted daily and several times daily. We all face those temptations and granted some of the things we're tempted by are relatively insignificant. You know, maybe we're tempted to have that extra scoop of ice cream. Well, maybe it's not so insignificant, but you know, we're we're tempted by things like Maybe we stay up later than, than we ought to watching the end of a movie. Or, or maybe we, we don't mark down a stroke on the golf course. I don't even know what that means because I don't golf. But those of you who golf do. Now I think I know what it means. You cheat. <laughs> the problem is uh, 
pretty soon we, we face things that are, are bigger and more serious temptations. Oh, maybe we drive 75 in a 65 mile per hour zone, we cheat on our taxes, or we look at pornography on the internet. And we can always justify our temptation, giving in to the temptation by saying, well, I was, I was running late. Usually I, I drive the speed limit. Or we say, well, you know, the government is always sticking it to us. This is just my way of, of kind of getting back. It's only fair. Or we say, well, I'm, I'm only looking at women that I don't know. So no one is hurt. Big mistake. You see, one of the biggest lies is just once won't hurt. David looked and lusted, and then he invited the temptation into his house with him. Just once. But that sin led him to have to sin again and again when Bathsheba became pregnant. Instead of confessing his sin to Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, he thought that he could cover it up. Cover it up by having Uriah sleep with Bathsheba while he was home on, on leave from the army, and that way Uriah would think the, the child was his. But Uriah wouldn't do it. You see, he wouldn't go against the, the ethical code for those who are active in the military. As long as his fellow soldiers were out in the field, he himself would abstain from the pleasures of civilian life, including relations with his own wife. Uriah, even though he was not an Israelite, knew the rules of holy war. As a warrior who must return to battle, sexual relations, even with your wife, are not allowed. So David thought, well, maybe if I can get him drunk, he'll forget about his ethics, he'll go home and, and sleep with his wife, and that, wouldn't work, that didn't work either. So David arranges for Uriah to be killed. He sends orders to have Uriah sent into the middle of the heaviest fighting and then to have the rest of, of the troops pull back, leaving Uriah there to, to fight by himself and ultimately to be killed. Just once won't hurt, right? The king has fallen. The problem with just once is that often just once leads to something else, which leads to something else, and soon the sin has you in way over your head. David sinned, and he tried to cover it up. <laughs> You've heard it said, a lot of times the cover-up is what gets you. Richard Nixon didn't break into the Watergate office building. Joe Paterno didn't sexually abuse boys. And yet, to the, to the best of our knowledge, both of them were involved in a cover-up. And oftentimes, it's the attempt to cover up one sin that leads to a host of, another, of other sins. You and I need to avoid the temptation in the first place. And so, if you're like me and you have a weakness for sweets, don't buy cookies at the store and bring them home. Take them to the office. And, no, don't take them. No. If you're an alcoholic, don't buy a case of beer for yourself or, or for anybody else. And if you have a gambling problem, don't go to the boat for dinner. It's like the man who came to the doctor and said, I, I broke my arm in two places. And the doctor said, I'd stay away from those two places. 
You see, if there's something that causes you to be tempted, stay away from it. Most of us can probably recite the nursery rhyme, Humpty Dumpty. I know, he'll go home and he'll tell people, you know what our pastor said today? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Nice little story, isn't it? My question is this. What in the world was an egg doing sitting on a wall? An egg belongs in an egg carton. Humpty Dumpty was in the wrong place. David was in the wrong place as well. Perhaps he should have been out fighting with the, the rest of the army, but instead he was walking around on the rooftop looking at women as they were bathing. He was inviting the temptation. And you and I need to avoid temptation by staying away from the people, the places, or the things that would tempt us. David was tempted by a beautiful woman, and that in and of itself is not a sin. Being tempted is, is not a sin. Yielding to the temptation is the sin. So David sees the beautiful woman and then sends someone to get her. He knew Bathsheba was married, but he sent for her anyway. And it was all downhill from there. The king fell. He sinned. And then he sinned again, trying to cover it up. When he had Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, killed. Well, believe it or not, there is some good news to all of this. And the good news is that even when we give in to temptation, we can be forgiven. Now, that doesn't mean <laughs> that we ought to give in just so we can be forgiven. Remember, Paul talks about that. But the good news is that we can be forgiven when we stumble, when we fall. There is no sin so big that God will not forgive us. And we'll talk more about this uh, in a couple of weeks as David recognizes his sin and cries out for forgiveness. But for today, let me simply say, there is forgiveness with God. In his great love for us, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for your sin, to die for my sin. Jesus took upon himself the punishment that rightfully belongs to you and me. His body was broken, his blood was shed. He paid the price for your sin and mine that we might be forgiven. The king had fallen. You and I have fallen. You and I have sinned. I, I don't even have to ask you because I know that you and I have sinned. Scripture tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. We all stand in need of that forgiveness. The song that Wake Up Call led us in. Everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of a Savior. Now you might say, well, my sin isn't as bad as what David's sin was. And I would say, mm, maybe not. But in the eyes of God, a sin is a sin. There's no big sins. There's no little sins. They're all sins. And what matters is that in Christ there is forgiveness. And so as we think about this today, my question to you would be, 
Have you dealt with the sin in your life? Those times when you have given in to, to temptation, whatever the temptation might have been. Have you dealt with it by, by admitting it to yourself and then confessing it to God? Have you cried out to him for forgiveness? And if you haven't done that, now is definitely the time to seek the forgiveness, to live then the life as a forgiven person. Let us pray. God, as we think about